Hello and welcome. My name is Bertrand. Today I want to walk you through a demo on how to ingest a PDF file into a graph database. This video is a companion to my blog post talking about the differences between vector database and graph databases in the context of retrieval of metagenerational RAC. The blog format really allowed me to dive deep into those differences, but I felt it would be a good idea to provide a Reader's Digest version in the form of a recorded demo. I have also recorded a similar demo on the vector database side. In this demo, I will walk you through how to take a PDF file ingest it into a graph database, and then query its content using natural language queries. For the purpose of the demo, I will use the Powerage R760X spec sheet as my guinea pig, because, you know, somebody has to. Let's dive right into the demo. The first component I need is obviously a graph database. For this, I will be using what is probably the most popular one, Neo4j. So the first thing I need to do is install an instance of Neo4j. Honestly, the best and easiest way to get one going is to use a Docker image and spin up a Docker container. Once I've started the container, I can see it is running. And by looking at the logs, I can see that my Neo4j instance has been initialized. I can verify that everything is running properly by connecting to the Neo4j browser. To do this, all I need is to point my web browser to the Docker server's IP address and port 7474, which is the port of the Neo4j browser listens on. For me, that address is 192.168.122.200. As everything is properly initialized, I'm presented with the login page to my Neo4j instance. In the connect URL field, I need to enter the IP address of the Docker server and port 7687, which is the port on which the Neo4j browser communicates with the Neo4j instance through the uh, Bolt protocol. Then I need my authentication, authentication method which is a username and password that you created, that you entered when you created the, the Docker container. I enter that username and password and then click Connect. Once connected, I'm presented with the default Neo4j browser screen. I have no data loaded yet, so obviously there is nothing to show. On top of Neo4j, this demo also requires pip and Tika. Tika uses Java, so you will need to have installed uh, the JRA and JDK prior to, to uh, be able to run anything. I've shown how to install those at the beginning of the demo for the vector database. Now that I have pip installed, I can install the Python modules required by this demo, Tika, Langchain, OpenAI, and Neo4j. As I've mentioned before, Tika is being used to extract text from a PDF file. I need Langchain, as I will be leveraging a number of its chains. I would also need OpenAI, as I will be using ChatGPT 3.5, and you will see how. The last Python module needed is Neo4j, which of course will be used to connect to my Neo4j instance. Unlike with the vector database where I can show every single step, and because of the nature of the graph, of graph databases, this demo requires a number of helper functions. The code of those is included in my blog, So, but from a high level, let's get through uh, what needs to be done. First, I need to get to extract the text from the PDF file. Then I need to split that text into smaller chunks. Pretty standard so far, but then I need to extract entities from each chunks and create a relationship between those entities. And that is what the helper function will do. Here you see the final helper function called extract and store graph, which takes a document or chunk, extract the entities and create the relationships and store them into the database. Another component I will need is an LLM to convert my natural language queries into Cypher. Cypher is the query language of graph databases. Here, I am leveraging the chat OpenAI module from LangChain which, to connect to chat GPT 3.5 Turbo LLM. Which LLM gives the best result is definitely an area of investigation, but I got pretty decent results with chat GPT 3.5, which is why I'm using it. With those pieces in place, I can initialize my connection to Neo4j by specifying the URL, the username, and password, and feeding them to the Neo4j graph module from Langchain. This command returns a connection to the graph database. I am now ready to ingest my document. First, I need to extract the text using the ticket parser. 
I store it in a variable called text. And I can check that its value is indeed the content of my PDF file. Next, I need to create a splitter using the token text splitter module from Langchain. Here, I'm using a chunk size of 2,000 characters with an overlap of 24 characters. But you can also play with those parameters to see which one are going to give you the best result. Once I've created my splitter, I can feed my document to it and store the result in a dictionary called documents. I can see that my file was split into two chunks. The final step is to feed each chunk to the function called extract and store graph. This function can take a while to run depending on the size, the number, and the content of the chunk it is being fed. Once the extract and store graph function completes, I can connect to my Neo4j instance and see the entities and relationship that were created. I can refresh my Neo4j browser page, then, then click on the database icon at the top left and to bring up the content of the default database, which is where the entities and relationship were created in. This way, I can visualize the graph created by the function. Now that my document is loaded into the database, let's query the database. Querying a graph database requires to convert a natural language query into a cipher query, which is the query language of graph database. Luckily, Langchain has a chain that can do that. It is called graph cipher QA chain, so let's import it. Before I can query a database, I need to refresh the schema of the graph database, which, is, which means basically reloading the data to account for the newly created entities and relationships. And that needs to be done every single time you uh, add more data to the database. Next, I need to instantiate my graph cipher QA chain. This requires a few things. Connection to the graph database, an LLM to translate the natural language query into cipher, and an LLM to translate the, the return cipher data into natural language. In my case, I'm also setting the verbose option to true so I can see more information about what's happening. Once I have my chain inst instantiated, I can now ask a question to the graph database and see what comes back. In this example, I'm asking what use cases are supported by the R760XA. And you can see that the response coming back from the chain. Because of the verbose option being true, you can also see the cipher query that was generated as well as the result of that query and how it got translated by the LM back into natural language. There you have it. A quick demo of the end-to-end -end workflow to ingest PDF files into graph databases. My name is Bertrand, and thank you for watching.